In this video, we'll see how we can leverage the power of Google's Gemini model to make an app that solves math equation and also shows a step-by-step -step explanation. So I know I'm quite late for making a video on Gemini, but I wanted to make a real-world application and hence that took a bit of time. Anyways, let's get to the workflow that we are going to follow to make the app that uses Gemini through its API. So first and foremost, we are going to use Flutter for this app because making app in it is relatively easy. The app will use camera to get an image of equation and then we'll send that image to Gemini via API. Once we get the response from it, we'll put the response back in the text widget. That's it. That's the whole flow. We're not going to set up Flutter because some great video is already out there. It's pretty easy to set up or you can continue if you know any other SDK or you can make a website for it. It's up to you since we are only using API calls, the concepts will be pretty much the same. It's just UI that will be different and it should be according to your use case. So without getting further ado, let's get started. I'm using VS Code and hit Ctrl plus Shift plus P to bring up this window. Type Flutter here and select a new project. Then choose Empty Application. Name your application and it will start preparing default code and layout for a basic app. Once it finishes, you will get some code in a file name main.dart. You can use flutter doctor command to see if you don't have any issues in flutter or in its dependency just for sanity. Once it gets green, we can simply launch the app using flutter run command. I have connected my android device and selected from here. Hence the app will show in this device once Gradle finishes its task. When app launches, you'll see a basic UI that says hello world in a text widget. Now we are ready to make our own UI. Start off by adding dependencies like image picker to get an image from camera, image cropper for cropping an image, and HTTP for send API request to the server. As soon as you save the changes, Flutter will automatically download and install dependencies. Now get back to code and remove this predefined layout. We'll have our own custom home page, a custom title and choose your theme according to your color choice. Now make a class with the name my home page that inherit properties of stateful widget. So the difference between stateless widget and stateful widget is stateless widget is static while the stateful widget is dynamic. It means the dynamic changes in variable gets updated into stateful widget but not possible in a stateless widget. So we will need to update image placeholder and response from API in text placeholder dynamically. So that's why we are using stateful widget. Now this showing error. If you hover over it, then hit quick fix, then you'll see a bunch of options and it's missing default override function. So we can click on that to implement that function. So basically this creates a mutable state for a widget. Instead of directly using this function, we'll create a private class which inherit properties of it. Again, hover over it and use quick fix to get the required build function where we will be defining our UI. Now use a scaffold which provides visual layout and in that we'll define app bar which is this part of our UI and place app title instead of text widget. Now define what should be the body of the layout. For now we'll be placing a text that says hello flutter and in the bottom of the layout we'll be placing a floating action button which does nothing on pressing it, a tool tip which you can see on long pressing the button and place a camera icon on it. Now that we have basic layout ready, hit shift plus R to reload the app and we got an error. It says that theme data can't be used with const keyword here. So just remove it. I think I mistakenly placed it there. You can place more const keyword to remove some warnings, but honestly that doesn't matter for what we are doing. And now hit shift R to hot reload again. And see, we have an app bar with a title of our app name a text field that's saying hello flutter and an action button with a camera icon and a tool tip. Let's move the layout to our use case and change the text from hello flutter to no image is selected. And hit hot reload again. And see it reflected in UI. 
now we want the button to open camera on clicking it so let's define a function that opens up camera we'll be using image picker dependency for that and after initialization use picker to pick the image by selecting source as camera if image picked successfully refer it to global variable to use it from outside of the function So where we will use it? In an image placeholder. So let's go and place it in an image widget. Remove this text widget from here and use a stack which places widget on top of one another. Use the condition to show the text when no image is picked from camera. And if yes, then place the captured image in the image widget. And inside this condition, put this line in set state function which will update and reflect the image in image widget once it's updated. Now call a function to open up camera from floating action button. Define the function and put the condition that if no image is selected then get image from camera. Now avoid hot reload this time and close and rebuild app using flutter run command. It will take a bit of time again and when it's done use camera button to open camera. Capture an image and see it's reflected on image widget. And also the text which says no image is selected is gone. Now let's see how the captured image will look like if that image is of our use case, which is a set of equations. So here are some equations and we'll capture an image of it. And see, we have a problem that there are several equations in a single image and we need to solve only one. So we need to filter out or crop image to only one equation. Now we'll use image cropper here. So the raw image which was going directly to image widget will be go to image cropper first. We'll crop image there and then you'll be sending cropped image to image widget. Use captured image as source. I don't remember all aspect ratio so referring to the documentation for doing some copy paste. And here is an important part that we missed. This needs to go inside android manifest file in order to get image cropper working. Use copy button to copy this content and in your source code go to android app source expand main and open android manifest.xml file and place just where the default activity ends. And if you are using an iphone congratulations you need not to do any additional configuration like we android users do. I scroll down a bit and in this example you can see that preset of aspect ratio is there. Now we can do some hard work. Select all these and hit ctrl c to copy and paste it inside aspect ratio list. And for iOS setting copy the respected line and paste it here. Quick tip. You can always use const keyword if you don't want this annoying warning line. Now it's done and now we need to set up the crop image for image reference if crop image is not null of course. And hit hot reload. And again error. So it says that cropped image is an icing function that returns future object. So we need to put await keyword here and that's it. And since we changed android manifest hot reload will not work here. So close the application and relaunch it again using flutter run command. Once the application is launched, you can go ahead and capture an image. And now you can see the image is not going directly to the image widget. Instead, it is going to the cropper. Now you have the option to crop the image. Crop it according to your preference. And see, cropped image is reflected on image widget. Second flow is ready which is capturing the image and cropping it. Now we just need to send this image on Gemini over the API. But before that, let's place the icon over a condition that if image is already taken, then the button icon should change to send icon. Otherwise, it will be a camera icon. And see, it fixed. Do the same with the tooltip as well, as it should also change with the state of layout. Now let's set up the most important part of this video, the Gemini API. Go to ai.google.dev and click on get API key. 
This will open up Google AI Studio. Talking about the interface, you have option to create a new API key or get an existing API key from left pane. On main page, you have text placeholder to write from. And in the right pane, you have options to choose model, temperature and several other parameters. So we are going to solve an equation from an image. So we'll need the model from Gemini Pro to Gemini Pro Vision, which is made for dealing with images. And as soon as you select, you can see that there is an example image and prompt here. Hit tab to get the image and text from hint. Remove one image and write the desired prompt which we are going to use in our image. If you hit get code here, you will see API payloads and how to make the API calls in different languages. But there are no example for Dart or Flutter here. So we can get this JSON payload from this curl tab and as it almost the same for every other language and use it in our Flutter code. So this is our region of interest. Now prepare the code for HTTP request. Make a function named send image which takes image file and put a condition just for surety that the image file is not null. Encode it to base64 encoding so that we can transfer the file in a JSON format and define a variable for API key. Now go ahead and copy the payload. And paste it temporarily in our IDE. Now we have to make API key. Go to get API option. And I've already created an API key. But if you haven't done yet. Just click on create API key. And it will simply create a new one for you. Once it's generated. You can click on it and copy it. Now paste it here. Once this part is done, define request body to encode the payload in JSON format, which we have copied earlier. And change the data to our base64 encoded image. Now use HTTP to send post request, but before that, you need to import HTTP. Now use http.post function to send the payload on URL. You can get the URL from where you got the payload. Copy it from here and paste it in URL parser. Replace this placeholder from API key variable. Define header. This too you will get from the same box. Copy and paste it here. And don't forget to alter it in a dictionary so that API knows that the payload type is in JSON format. In body, pass the request body which is our payload. And this is enough to send HTTP request to API server. For sanity, print message on console if request is successful and a message if failed or got an error. And that's it for sending request. Now go to action button and put a condition here that if image is captured, then send the image else open camera to get an image. Now hit ctrl c on app to stop app and using flutter run command to build it again. Once app installed, open up equation page and capture an image of it. Crop it to single equation and hit send button to send this image to Gemini and it failed. After a little bit of debugging, I find the culprit. I copied Gemini Pro URL instead of Gemini Pro Vision and since Gemini Pro doesn't deal with images, the request failed. Go to Gemini UI again and this time select Gemini Pro Vision and click on Get Code. Now copy the URL and replace it with our current Pro URL. Rebuilding the app again. But here you can do hot reload. That will work. Capture the image again. Crop. And send. It will take a few seconds. And see we got the response in console. This response contains solution of the equation we have sent. But it's also in JSON. And if we have to get the text. We need to go through candidates, content and part one by one. But before that, we need to put a text placeholder where we can show the response that we are getting from Gemini. 
so inside stack i'll remove this line and put a single child scroll view so if our response is getting too large we can actually scroll up to the bottom and see inside this define a column to place image and text widget in vertical sequence and place our earlier condition here that if image is there then it should be an image widget otherwise the text widget that says no image is selected use sized box to give a margin between widget and then put a container which contains our text widget and give it padding from all the sides and then the child of this container will be our text widget which actually contains response which we are going to get from Gemini now we need to define this variable and update it every time we get response so here set response body to content that we are getting from Gemini and define the variable above we know that we are getting response in form of json from gemini so we need to decode it to access values from keys the text values inside candidate then inside content then inside parts with the key name text i mistakenly placed response body inside function remove and put it back outside to access from within the class define flag name is sending and set it to false which we will use to place a loading var between making request and getting response set it to true and false inside set state now get back to layout code and before setting up loading bar add style to text to get the desired font size Once you're done with that, place a condition that if is sending is true, then add a circular progress bar in layout and choose color of it accordingly. Now set is sending flag to true on calling send image function and set it to false if you get response. That will remove progress bar once response is received. Now we are ready to launch. Hit shift plus R to hot reload. Pick up your phone, open camera, capture image of equations page, crop an equation and hit send. Wait for progress bar to disappear and see you have an answer. It looks good but we have a bit of problem like we have hard coded prompt. So if we wanted to solve questions of differentiation or integration we need to programmatically change prompt. So let's get a step further and add a editable text field where you can decide what you wanted to do with the image. Define a variable in which we will store text from edit text field and put a condition here to proceed with default prompt if there are no custom prompt. Now make a editable text field, put a little margin using sized box and define text field with controller. Define controller above and change value of custom prompt with whatever entered in text field. You can print content of text field in console if you want. Now rerun the app again. Oops, I forgot to initialize this. Now hit hot reload again. Once it runs, get some other equation like derivative questions. Open camera, capture image of it and choose an equation. I am cropping this. Write a prompt like I wanted Gemini to solve it and return a step by step explanation. Once done, hit send button and wait for response. And see, it solved the equation while explaining every step. So this is one among infinite number of use cases that can be built on top of large language models like Gemini. This is bit of large walkthrough than usual so if you have any question please drop them in comments. Suggest some topic that you wanted to see. Watch quick explained playlist if you wanted to understand things on conceptual level with ease. And as always thanks for watching.